let's talk a little bit big picture, okay? 2008, we had a debt problem. No? The Fed put the interest rates at zero for 15 years. Now, lowering rates to zero made no sense. You know, they, they didn't try, they panicked, you know, they didn't try to lower it to 3%. They went all the way to zero. And once it's at zero, it's very hard to raise it. Right. So now we're going to have to learn to live in an environment with higher interest rates. And 15 years, you know, that's a generation of traders, a generation of finance practitioners who don't know what interest rates mean. So welcome to a new era. It's a new era. We have more debt than we did before. The Federal Reserve's primary job is price stability. And monetary policy is something that is, you know, short term. They used that tool right. Right, in place of a structural reform. You see, you can't use, I mean, it's not made for that. Nope. So, so that's a big mistake, and we're going to pay the price. First, we have to understand the difference between a high and a low interest rate environment. A low interest rate environment sees higher bond prices, potential capital gains, and favorable conditions for stocks due to lower corporate borrowing costs. Real estate demand may rise as mortgage financing becomes more affordable. In a high interest rate environment, bond prices tend to be lower, potentially leading to capital losses, while stocks may face mixed effects due to the increased corporate borrowing costs. Real estate demand could slow down with higher financing costs. But how and when exactly will we pay the price he's talking about? I don't know when it will come, but let's look at what, what we have. It's more than $100 trillion dollars of real estate valuation, okay, <clears throat> it's not, we're not at 3% mortgages, we're at 7% and, and going north, okay? So, and you have a lot of, the methodology of the startup business changed. In the past, they used to be selling you a future cash flow, now they're selling you future funding, like you're going to sell it to someone else. So the whole, the whole structure needs to tumble, okay? We, it needs okay. to tumble. Yes, like tumble, 2008-style tumble? Probably, because systems don't correct themselves without some kind of, uh, you know, a little bit of pain. So you think a, a true crisis is a coming? The, the, the risk is right there, okay? We know we have real estate valuation that are, cannot, you know, I, I don't make sense with interest rates, short-term rates at five and a quarter percent. We have, uh, we have startups that, that are basically we're using the the funding market right. to, to as cash machine, and it's not sustainable. The stock market is another story, because the stock market seems to have some, you know, it's probably more robust than the so others. This doesn't sound like a black swan started. event. This sounds like a... You, you're, a white you're, swan. It's a white you're, swan You're saying event. it's right in front of us. The risk is in front of it. You see a fragile bridge, right? The bridge that's fragile. Okay, you know it's going to collapse at some point. Okay, so you need to fix it. How do you fix it? You've got to reduce debt. You've got to do a lot of cosmetic things, things that are not cosmetic, actually. Sorry. He talks about real estate, startups, and stocks. The stock market is an interesting one because it is the indicator most people turn to when they want to know the status of the economy because the stock market is pricing in the economy's state almost immediately. But real estate and startups are a different story. Real estate markets tend to move more slowly than stock markets due to the nature of the assets. Real estate prices are influenced by factors such as local economic conditions, population growth, and housing supply, which change at a slower pace than the rapid fluctuations seen in the stock prices, driven by factors like earnings reports and investor sentiment. Also, as a big part of real estate deals are financed by bank loans, interest rates have a huge impact on the market. In the words of the great Stanley Druckenmiller, the longer inflation stays, the stickier it gets. And if inflation stays, it's very unlikely that we will see lower interest rates for a while, which can make the next few years very challenging for the real estate market. And then let's talk about startups. In the world of free money, it's good to be a startup founder because you can raise insane amounts of money with the promise of future success. That's the reason why crazy startup valuations were possible in the last 10, 15 years. The big question is, will the setback of the last year continue or will we see more growth? 
if you don't believe in MMT, the binge that we had at zero was much larger than any binge we've had in the past. I mean, if you really do believe in comeuppance or hangovers, however you want to characterize yeah, it, exactly. we haven't exactly. had it because well, this has paying, been the, the this has been the mother of all binges, but we haven't seen it. There are people in this uh, in the scene that that they argue with me all the time that the strength of the dollar. Uh, that it's not, they don't think it's ever going to change. So we're able to print. We're, we're the we're the country of record on the entire planet. We have this ability to print that's never going to go away. So we can spend as much as we want. Yeah, I mean, that's MMT, the MMT people. No, MMT made no sense, but 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 people like bought into it because it was again. It was you can make a case for it because we can always print money because we are the, the dollar is the standard for for the world. Yeah, I mean the the, the, the Germany was a, was a, was a power, okay, <laughs> and they printed, okay. So it's not like it, we've right. seen it. I know they yeah, seem yeah, to ignore they history. They don't have history. But I, I sent them a, a picture of a wheelbarrow full of cash when they argued. They in simple terms, modern monetary theory says that governments with their own currency, like the United States, don't need to rely on taxes or borrowing to spend money because they can essentially create as much money as they want. They have the power to print money and they control the currency supply. Unlike a regular household that needs to manage its finances carefully, governments are different. They shouldn't make policies based on fears of accumulating a large national debt because they have more control over their financial situation. Critics of the MMT argue that it downplays the risk of inflation and the potential negative consequences of high government deficits and debt, which we can see right now. But knowing all this, what should we do to protect and grow our portfolio? If you're an individual, you have to be uh, uh, stay away from there are two businesses you're going to stay away from. Uh, you know, new technologies, okay, particularly the ones that are connected to AI because it's going to be very unstable, and the other one is real estate. And, and if you're a professional in the market, make sure you're not naked long stocks. Right. I mean. When he says he would stay away from new technology and AI, I assume he talks about companies whose whole business model is based on AI. So not the big tech companies who are trying to implement AI in their already very successful business or companies like Nvidia that sells computing power to all tech companies, including the AI companies. In terms of real estate, historically, if you were willing to wait it out, you never lost money on it. So I assume he means that if you want to profit on a real estate investment in the next five, 10 years, it might not be a good idea to buy now. For the last 15 years, we had a low interest rate environment, but that changed now. It seems like we will have to operate in a higher interest rate environment for a longer than expected time. The real estate and startup market is heading towards some challenging times, so you should stay away from these investments for a while. The government can't just bring money without having to deal with the consequences.